Aduh. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good evening I bid to Mr. Haji Idris bin Bidin, the district education officers, all the principals, teachers and to all SPM candidates. Alhamdulillah, be grateful to the divine presence with the abundance of blessing. We are here today to join a seminar regarding your final SPM booster for this last battle. My name is Nur Umaira binti Nurhamdi, your host for today's session. So I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. We appreciate you taking time off your busy schedules to join us today. Yeah, we hope that we learn and gain a lot of inspiration throughout the session. So actually, I was an a student from SMK Chukai in 2015 for less than three months. Yeah, I know it may sound like a short period of time, but Pepsis really opened me up through high school life and I'm so thankful for that. So before we start our ceremony, I would like to introduce our co-host for today's session, Farah Amira Aina Binti Ramli. Hi Farah, nice to see you again. Hi, happy to see you too. Okay, so today we will start our ceremony with a welcoming speech from Mr. Haji Idris bin Bidin, the head of Kemaman District Education Officer. Please welcome. <coughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, salam MPG ya. Mendepani pendidikan global ini salam uh, apa ni Jabatan Pendidikan Negeri Terengganu. Uh, salam Kemaman Unggul uh, yang berusaha uh, apa ni Umairah tadi dah moderator. Uh, seterusnya yang berusaha Cik Muhammad Asri bin Jusuh Uh, pensyarah ataupun tenaga pengajar di MRSM Muazzam Shah yang akan memberi uh, pencerahan tentang uh, apa ni subjek bahasa Inggeris pada malam ini yang berusaha Puan Salma pegawai SIC Plus uh, pejabat pendidikan di arah Kemaman seterusnya uh, semua guru dan juga anak-anak calon SPM yang cikgu kagumi sekalian Pertama sekali syukur Alhamdulillah kerana pada malam ini cikgu rasa satu malam yang sangat bertuah kepada calon-calon sekalian kerana kita berpeluang pada malam ini untuk bersama dengan uh, penceramah yang sangat hebat uh, yang akan bersama-sama dengan anak-anak sekalian uh, juga Puan Salma Wati yang mungkin juga uh, akan menjelaskan sesuatu mungkin kepada anak-anak memandangkan kepada apa ni peperiksaan SPM yang akan bermula pada 22 Februari iaitu hari Isnin minggu hadapan sudah tidak lama dan bila kita melihat balik kepada subjek yang selalu disebut sebagai subjek kritikal antaranya adalah bahasa Inggeris dan juga subjek-subjek yang lain misalnya saya sangat apa ni teringat balik kepada calon-calon yang kita cuba target untuk dapat semua A di daerah Kemaman yang kita apa ni pantau mereka ini dengan begitu rapat dan Puan Salma pun sangat uh, hampir dengan calon-calon berkenaan tetapi apa yang kita dapat uh, pastikan kita dapat lihat uh, antara subjek yang kita nampak yang boleh mengganggu calon ini untuk mendapat semua A adalah uh, subjek uh, bahasa Inggeris Misalnya calon kita di SMK Air Putih saya tengok uh, pun ada sedikit sebanyak uh, problemnya dengan bahasa Inggeris di SMK Bukit Kuang pun sama, di Cenih pun sama. Waima sekolah yang kita nampak sekolah yang hebat yang kita ada di Kemaman termasuklah ICOM, Tepsis dan juga TESMA, sekolah elit, mak lagam dan sebagainya kita nampak antara subjek yang menjadi penghalang kepada calon-calon yang kita target untuk dapat semua A itu kita nampak memang ada uh, berkisar tentang subjek uh, bahasa Inggeris. Jadi uh, cikgu menasihatkan kepada semua calon yang mengikuti program pada malam ini uh, anak-anak kena pastikan kita belajar ni kita tak boleh pilih subjek yang kita minat kita ambil subjek yang kita tak minat kita tinggalkan. Sebab uh, pada kementerian ataupun kepada negara 
subjek yang kita nampak kritikal yang orang ramai tak boleh menguasai sebenarnya itulah subjek yang dikira sangat baik uh, sangat dilihat oleh institusi pengajian tertentu jadi nak tak nak anak-anak kena imbangkan pencapaian anak-anak kalau kita dah tahu subjek itu kritikal untuk kita contohnya bahasa Inggeris pada malam ini kita kena perlu lihat balik Uh, perlu ada penambahbaikan bagaimana untuk kita ubah uh, apa ni kebolehan kita dalam subjek berkenaan dengan merujuk kepada guru mungkin ataupun dengan uh, merujuk kepada buku dengan modul bimbingan bersama rakan-rakan dan sebagainya dan juga pada malam ini uh, cikgu nampak satu malam yang sangat beruntung untuk anak-anak kerana kita ada kepakaran oleh Uh, Encik Muhammad uh, Asri bin Jusuh yang kita jemput pada malam ini untuk uh, apa ni uh, menyebarkan uh, maklumat-maklumat ataupun kemahiran-kemahiran yang perlu anak-anak ikuti fahami uh, untuk uh, mengubah kualiti prestasi pencapaian anak-anak dalam subjek uh, bahasa Inggeris. Jadi cikgu nasihatkan kepada semua yang dirangkaikan melalui apa ni uh, maya perjumpaan pada malam ini secara virtual dan sebagainya. Cikgu harap uh, ambillah peluang pada malam ini untuk anak-anak membuat rujukan kepada penceramah nanti ataupun mungkin juga uh, Puan Salma pun juga mungkin akan dapat membantu uh, ataupun uh, rakan-rakan kita yang dijemput sama untuk menjayakan program pada malam ini jadi anak-anak yang berada di luar sana kita kemaman calon kita uh, Cik Muhammad Asri kita ada 2,628 orang calon jadi ramai tu dan bila kita buat analisis pencapaian grade purata subjek yang kita nampak agak rendahnya antaranya adalah subjek uh, bahasa Inggeris jadi uh, pesanan cikgu sekali lagi kepada anak-anak sekalian uh, dengar betul-betul apa yang akan diperkatakan oleh uh, penceramah pada malam ini uh, ambil catatan, ambil ingatan, uh, kefahaman yang mendalam uh, boleh bertanya kepada saudara penceramah dan sebagainya dengan tujuan dan tidak lain untuk mengubah pencapaian diri anak-anak supaya dalam subjek bahasa Inggeris ini utamanya anak-anak mendapat uh, pencapaian yang terbaik sebab kalau kita tengok kepada kelayakan untuk anak-anak memohon uh, apa ni apa-apa saja kursus uh, selepas uh, SPM nanti antara subjek yang sangat diambil kira kalau kita tengok adalah subjek-subjek yang kita kira sangat kritikal kepada semua calon jadi kalau kita tengok antaranya bahasa Inggeris yang dikendaki kemudian tu uh, subjek-subjek termasuklah uh, admit matematik uh, tambahan Uh, subjek fizik misalnya, chemistry uh, jadi ini ada subjek-subjek yang kemungkinan besar menjadi penghalang kepada anak-anak tetapi untuk subjek yang lain tu kita uh, ada kaedah-kaedah kita nanti bagaimana kita untuk memantapkan pencapaian anak-anak prestasi dalam subjek berkenaan kita ada guru-guru yang cemerlang di peringkat uh, daerah yang boleh bimbing anak-anak cuma pada malam ini yang bertuahnya kepada anak-anak kita ada penceramah yang kita datangkan secara maya uh, yang akan membimbing anak-anak uh, dalam subjek bahasa Inggeris iaitu Encik Muhammad Asri bin Jusuf uh, tadi disebut kau orang dungu jiran kita kemaman uh, yang saya yakin dalam diri dia tu ada semangat uh, Terengganu nak nak bantu anak-anak Terengganu anak-anak kemaman khususnya jadi anak-anak uh, ikuti dengan teliti apa yang dimaklumkan nanti dan ambil itu sebagai satu apa ni pengetahuan baru, kemain baru untuk mengubah pencapaian anak-anak dalam bahasa Inggeris. Jadi cikgu juga akhirnya mengambil kesempatan pada malam ini untuk mengucapkan berbanyak terima kasih kepada Encik Muhammad Asri yang sudi untuk bersama dengan anak-anak kemaman pada malam ini Uh, untuk memberi beberapa perkara pencerahan untuk menambah baikkan pencapaian anak-anak dalam subjek bahasa Inggeris. Jadi cikgu nak ucap terima kasih banyak kepada Cik Muhammad Asri yang sudi bersama pada malam ini dan terima kasih juga kepada semua termasuk uh, moderator yang dimaklumkan tadi pernah belajar di SMK Cukai 
Uh, jadi kalau kita tengok itu satu lagi kelebihan yang ada kepada anak-anak uh, lepasan apa ni sekolah menengah yang kita ada di Kemaman termasuk uh, di Texas itu sendiri. Jadi tanyah dan syabas. Dan bila sebut tentang Texas ini cikgu pun rasa macam sangat bangga sebab tahun lepas satu sukses kemenjadian yang sangat luar biasa dalam kemenjadian SPM tahun lepas bila mana Texas dapat melahirkan seorang calon yang mendapat semua A+ plus, iaitu Muhammad Syafiq Akram bin Syafi'i dan untuk makluman uh, Cik Muhammad Asri khususnya kita Tengganu pada tahun lepas kita ada 23,000 orang calon SPM ada yang belajar di sekolah SBP Baksa Mapenoh sekolah menengah sains, sekolah imtiaz sekolah-sekolah yang kita nampak dikawal dari segi kemasukan jadi dalam 23,000 orang calon itu hanya seorang saja yang mendapat semua A plus di Terengganu dan calon ini bukannya datang daripada calon sekolah menengah sains bukan dari SBPI, bukan dari MRSM tetapi calon ini adalah calon dari SMK Cukai Kemaman Terengganu dan sekarang ini sedang mengikuti pengajian dalam jurusan farmasi di di Australia cuma menariknya bila saya bercakap dengan Muhammad Syafiq Akram dia kata bagi subjek bahasa Inggeris dia bila dia buat latihan, dia buat penulisan dan sebagainya jadi hasil penulisan dia itu dia akan hantar kepada semua guru bahasa Inggeris yang ada di sekolah dia sama ada yang mengajar dia ataupun yang tidak mengajar tetapi dia deliver semua sekali dan apa ni dia akan dapat komen daripada guru-guru dia dia tak tengok dari segi perbezaan antara guru yang komen ketah dia itu tetapi dia mengambil uh, apa ni sikap yang positif uh, dia dapat pelbagai komen daripada guru-guru dia jadi semuanya itu diambil dan mungkin itulah juga resepi kepada anak ini akhirnya mendapat pencapaian uh, SPM pada tahun lepas uh, semua A+. Plus. Kalau dia tak ada dari segi penyumbangan itu Tengganu sebenarnya tidak ada seorang pun yang dapat semua A+. Plus. Jadi yang menyelamatkan Terengganu saya tengok kalau tahun lepas itu adalah Muhammad Syafiq Akram bin Syafi'i iaitu pelajar dari SMK Cukai Kemaman Terengganu. Jadi tepsis antara sekolah yang kita gantung harapan yang tinggi kepada kemenjadian yang terbaik termasuk juga ICOM, uh, Imtiaz Kemaman dan juga uh, sekolah uh, Tesmal, sekolah elit Mak Lagam. Tetapi cikgu yakin dan percaya anak-anak yang berada di sekolah lain pun ada potensi yang tertentu. Misalnya kalau kita tengok SMK Air Putih setelah 45 tahun penubahan SMK Air Putih akhirnya ada yang dapat semua A dalam pencapaian apa ni SPM 3 tahun lepas. Fail dan Nerang pun 2 tahun lepas pun ada. Jadi semua sekolah yang kita ada sebenarnya sangat berpotensi. Uh, cuma halangan itu kita nampak subjek kadang-kadang bahasa Inggeris. Jadi cikgu minta kepada anak-anak yang dirakaikan dalam program pada malam ini ataupun rakan-rakan yang mungkin tidak ada kemudahan gadget untuk uh, join dan sebagainya. Cikgu harap beri uh, apa ni penerangan kepada rakan-rakan kita, nasihat mereka. Sebenarnya bahasa Inggeris ni bukanlah satu mata pelajaran yang sangat suka. Jadi timbulkan minat dalam diri anak-anak Uh, rasa nak menguasai bahasa lain iaitu bahasa Inggeris untuk survival masa depan untuk melariskan diri kita dalam pasaran apa ni institusi pengajian nanti tak kira sama ada college matriculasi ke apa-apa ke jadi kita dah nampak bahasa Inggeris ni merupakan satu subjek apa ni international language yang uh, diperlukan untuk survival kita untuk masa hadapan sama ada dalam kerjaya bila kita dah berjaya nanti bila interview tu ditengok juga kita dari segi fluent, kefasihan bahasa Inggeris dan sebagainya. Ataupun kita nak pilih kursus-kursus tertentu misalnya nak buat uh, apa ni undang-undang dan sebagainya. Jadi kalau kita tengok semuanya ini memerlukan kepada bahasa Inggeris. Jadi cikgu ingat tu saja uh, dalam ucapan cikgu pada malam ini. Sekali lagi terima kasih kepada Cik Muhammad Asri uh, apa ni pensyarah uh, dari MBSM Muazzam Shah, terima kasih banyak kerana dapat bersama untuk memberi pencerahan kepada calon-calon. Terima kasih juga kepada Puan Salma, moderator dan juga semua yang menjayakan program pada malam ini dan terima kasih kepada para guru yang mengikuti sama dan juga anak-anak calon untuk 
uh, menerima apa-apa saja pada malam ini dengan niat tidak lain dan tidak bukan tetapi untuk meningkatkan pencapaian anak-anak dalam uh, subjek bahasa Inggeris khususnya. Jadi tahniah terima kasih pada semua. Selamat maju jaya. Semoga Allah mempermudahkan urusan yang sangat suci murni ini. Anak-anak diberi kerahmatan. Uh, Allah melihat anak-anak sebagai insan yang uh, mendapat rahmat daripada Allah Subhanahu Taala dan anak-anak boleh jawab dengan yang terbaik dan insya Allah pencapaian cemerlang akan berpihak kepada anak-anak sekalian. Jadi uh, sekali lagi terima kasih banyak. Selamat maju jaya. Selamat menduduki SPM kepada semua. Sekian terima kasih. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Haji Idris Bibidin, for the welcoming speech. Moving on, I welcome Madam Salmawati binti Muhammad Idris, SISC Plus, School Academic Development Unit, to deliver her speech. Please welcome. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Can all of you hear me? Okay, Assalamualaikum and good evening to our respected uh, Tuan KPB Kemaman, Tuan Haji Idris Bibidin for being here with us, for his non-stop support for us. And uh, well, a warm greeting to our speaker, Cikgu Asri from MRSM. And of course, thank you so much for the uh, to the MC and the moderator. Okay. And thank you to all who are here tonight, who are with us tonight. Okay, first of all, I would like to thank to the organizer okay to the organizer who has uh, organized uh, this online program to all the students in kemaman um especially to nc asri for for his willingness okay for his willingness to spend his time with us tonight his precious time with us and then for his willingness to share his knowledge with our kids and I'm sure there are also teachers here and with our teachers here. And Alhamdulillah, um, thank you to everybody for all the effort that has been made. And then, um, as we all know, English is a very critical subject. It's a killer subject as mentioned by our Tuan PPD. And this program, from this program, from this online program, we really hope that um, it's going to benefit the teachers and the students and we really hope that the audience here the students especially to listen carefully to grab this chance which is not easy for you to have this chance okay to really uh, make use of the knowledge which will be shared to improve your english okay so please uh, Spend your time tonight, okay, for these two hours to gain as much as you can in order to improve your score, okay, to increase your score in the English papers and, of course, to improve your grade and, of course, to improve your overall result for English paper in SPM. So I hope that uh, whatever you are going to learn today, okay, from Anche Asri, a great speaker, a knowledgeable person, an expert, okay? Uh, I really hope that uh, you are going to make full use of whatever, every little bit that will be shared by him. So that's all from me. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you so much, Madam Salmawati binti Muhammad Idris for the speech. So now uh, I would like to invite one of our targeted students uh, from um, the school to give a little um, opening talk and uh, share some tips to all of you. Please welcome. Um, Assalamualaikum. Um, uh, thank you to all the tutors, um, all the teachers, 
seni yang tunggu dalam um, kelas malam ni dan um, dan saya harap uh, agar semua um, uh, semua calon-calon SPM yang join kelas malam ni dapat memanfaatkan sepenuhnya apa yang cikgu uh, apa yang cikgu cikgu kita akan konsep dan ah, itu saja dan saya harapkan um, um, bagi tumpuan yang sepenuhnya terhadap pengajaran cikgu nanti dan saya harap agar semua pelajar dapat memanfaatkan masa ini dengan sebaik mungkin dan dapat menjawab peperiksaan nanti dengan cemerlang. Terima kasih. Thank you, Fatin, for the speech. As we know, our country is being hit by the pandemic of COVID-19. Our face-to-face -face learning need to be uh, switched to the online learning, and a lot of a lot of obstacles need to be faced by the students, especially for four five students, because yeah, their SPM uh, examination needs to be delayed several times. So uh, today, our speaker will be giving some tips and tricks and also a little sparkle of inspiration and spirit to face this challenging situation. Ladies and gentlemen, first, let me introduce you the speaker for today's talk, Mr. Muhammad Asri bin Jusuf. Mr. Muhammad Asri bin Jusuf is one of the English teacher from MRSM Mu'azam Shah. Our speaker today graduated in bachelor's degree of teaching English to speakers of other languages, that's all, from Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand. If you have any question, feel free to drop your question in the comment box below. Without further ado, we are pleased to have Mr. Asri bin Hello, welcome hello. Mr. Asri. Thank you for the hey, hi, hi, hi. hi, Hello, Mr. both of you. How are you? Hello. I'm fine, alhamdulillah. How are you, both of you? All good? Okay. Yeah, good. Thank yeah. you. So okay, good to so see Ms. you guys. Ashri. All right. Yes. So, Mr. Ashri, I believe that you are already looking forward to sharing some tips with all of us. Well, yes. Mr. Ashri, the stage is yours. Thank you so much. All right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. To all Kemaman students, um, let me reintroduce myself. My name is Muhammad Asri Juso. You can call me Mr. Asri. I am one of the um, English, uh, one of the English teachers in Malaysia. Momentarily, I'm teaching in the Marasai Mu'azam Shah. Um, is my voice audible enough for everyone to listen? I hope everyone is listening. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm quite excited. I'm so honored with the opportunity uh, to be invited to be a speaker tonight, to be given a chance untuk bercakap, to talk to Kemaman students. As I am born and I was born and raised in Dungun Trengganu. I was a Trengganu uh, student before. I am still a Trengganu, a Trengganurian. That's the word, right? And then, um. Uh, thank you so much to Tuan Haji Idris uh, uh, Bidin, um, uh, the pegawai from um, Pejabat Pendidikan Daerah Kemaman and also Puan Salamiah and English Educator as well. I hope uh, both of you uh, are here to observe me. Please correct me if I'm wrong Any in any place. I am a relatively new teacher as well. But I hope whatever I am going to share tonight will be beneficial for everyone. Uh, Farah and Umaira, thank you so much. Uh, for those of you who are watching, just to let you know, both of the MCs are my ex-students. Uh, they are both from MRSMU Azam Shah as well. So I am so honoured to, uh, to be moderated by both of them tonight as well. Just so, to let you know as well, um, since I am going to be teaching uh, virtually with you guys, I'll, I'll, I am bringing my um, physical students with me tonight. Please say hi everyone, just say hi. Right. Hi Kamaman students lah, hi Kamaman students. So they are going to sit for SPM um, next week as well. Uh, same goes with you guys. So I, I believe uh, it is a good opportunity for me to, to uh, share the knowledge with you guys and with my own students as well. To just uh, take this as a reminder for your SPM paper next week. All right, are you ready? So, um, could you please shut the door? 
All right, um, Farah, Umaira, may I have the slide? All right. Okay, um, like uh, what I have introduced, this, that is my name, uh, Mama Asri Jusso. You can call me Mr. Asri. And uh, please, if you were to have any questions to ask, I will um, have a space at the end of the session so for those of you who want to ask a burning question, so feel free to ask. Um, both our moderators will moderate and uh, try to stream all the questions, and I will try to answer as many questions as possible by the end of the seminar. All right? Okay, all good. So maybe we can go to the next uh, slide. All right, everyone, please listen very carefully. This is your fate next week. Inilah takdir awak minggu depan. On Tuesday, 3rd of February 2021, I have made a schedule. Please take note of the schedule. From 8 a.m., you will be sitting for paper one. Everybody knows that. But you have only 45 minutes, okay? That is the designated time, okay? Um, and it is ideal for you to answer directed writing. The first part of the English paper one writing paper, uh, and that is the ideal uh, period of time for you to answer the first part of the paper directed writing. So 45 minutes. So from 8 a.m. until 8.45 a.m. Please focus on directed writing, okay? And for those of you who might be comfortable answering the continuous writing first, it's all right, okay? By all means, proceed. But I would uh, encourage uh, and um, suggest that you uh, answer according to the sequence of the question, all right? So that's the first part, 8 to until 8.45. Please take note, okay, my students as well, 8.45 until 9.45. 8.46 until 9.45 will be a continuous writing paper. So you will have one hour to answer continuous writing. All right. You may have three to five minutes uh, at the initial period of time uh, when you open your question booklet to make a quick draft or maybe browse through all the questions. Okay. You may have some time to do that. Okay, no problem. This is just a suggested time for you to answer both part of the question uh, in uh, paper one writing paper, okay? And then there is paper two, and it will begin at 10.30 a.m. until 12.45 p.m., okay? For section A and section B, paper two, I will suggest, okay, this is the ideal time. It will be, um, uh, the ideal time will be uh, written uh, in the question booklet as well. I can do this, okay? Uh, I will try to speak as uh, Malay and English as possible for everyone, to cater everyone's needs, okay? Tapi, I will maximize the use of English lah because this is an English class, kan? Okay, English paper 2, section A, MCQ, ABC question 2, and then section B, information transfer. You may answer both of the sections in 15 minutes. Maksna kata, from 10.30 a.m. until 11.20, answer paper 2, section A and B. Okay, and then another 15 minutes, you may answer section C, reading comprehension and summary. Okay, from 11.21 a.m. until 12.10 p.m. And then 12.11 p.m. until 12.45, you can answer section D, okay, the literature part, the poem, and also novel response question. All right, okay, for now. So if I may ask, Next, next slide. How ready are you to answer English paper? Okay, paper one and paper two next week. If you were to give me an indicator from on a scale of one to ten, one being, oh, I'm so scared. No, not next week. Boleh tak ambil result trial je? Seronok tengok result trial kan? Mana tahu? And then five maybe okay and ten, Maybe uh, you uh, have the feeling of bagilah paper tu sekarang, boleh jawab sekarang. Siapa rasa dia? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Who can tell me? Okay, uh, my students. 1, 2, 10. Apa dia? Try your paper dia kata. Huh? 7. That's the spirit. Okay, tak apa. It's okay. I hope 
your, the indicator will increase right after my seminar, okay? So, for the purpose of this seminar, I will only focus on paper one. Okay, this is the time, uh, um, the schedule for my seminar. Okay, the first part of the seminar, I will, I'll be talking about paper one, directed writing. And then I'll be talking about continuous writing, paper one. And I'm not going to talk about paper two tonight. But you are more than welcome to ask me questions regarding paper two as well. But I am only going to focus on paper one since we only have limited time to be talking together. Faham, eh? And then the last period of uh, seminar, I'll be uh, talking about myself. Saya akan cerita pengalaman saya sedikit. Uh, hope to inspire you guys. And uh, by the end, I'll be having a Q&A session with you guys. All right. So let's proceed. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Paper one, directed writing. Aku lari. Aku saya pun takut. Makan pun tak lena, tidur pun tak basah. Eh, apa tu? Okay. Paper one, directed writing. Next part. Okay. This is the marking criteria for directed writing. Okay. You will have to gain 35 marks altogether. Betul? 35 marks eh? So, 35 marks. So, F means format. You may... Uh, have okay, they are SPM papers who have only two marks for four marks, or they uh, and, uh, from 2014 taken up until now. Um, biasanya memang they need three marks for four marks, okay, and then which means you that you need to find 12 marks for content points, and you will need to uh, try to get as much marks as possible for language, okay? And the maximum mark for language is 20, all right? Uh, this is the... Um, okay, let's have a look at the next slide. Okay, um, the first tips and tricks that I would like to share with you guys that you need to get your format right. Okay, this is an easy two or three marks. Three marks lah. Biasanya format three marks, okay. Um, article, report, formal letter, informal letter, speech. The format is given to you at the end of the question. So, you need to read the question, the instruction of the question very carefully. Yang ni kena betul-betul ambil cakna. Contoh eh, I have tabulated the format for you in order um, to make things easier kan. Cuba tengok next slide. Okay, if you can see here, um, for formal letter, you will need to have address of the sender on top of the paper and then address of the recipient and then the date. Date dekat mana? My students, date dekat mana? On the right side, okay? And then uh, the closing ataupun uh, and of course the content uh, part of the paper and then uh, the closing ataupun uh, the signature and your designated post. Apa maksud designated post? Makna kata, it, you need to write the position, okay? Your position as a writer. You biasanya secretary, okay? To informal letter. Informal letter, address of the sender, date, salutation. Salutation means um, dear friends, like that. Itu salutation eh, means uh, and closing and signature. Okay, ada signature je. Tak perlu secretary ke apa ke. You may write your name below your signature. Alright, I nak go through this quickly sebab I know you guys have been revising this over and over again. I just nak uh, remind you guys, okay? For speech, are the greetings and salutation. And this is important, eh? You need to state the purpose of the speech. Bukan purpose to our list macam purpose. Tak ada, eh? Speech is one of the uh, essay yang non formatted So, ada dalam bentuk paragraph saja. Tapi, kena start uh, by greeting. Macam mana nak buat greetings, nanti I will go through speech a bit, okay? Ada a few things yang I nak cakap pasal speech. And then ada, uh, you need to thank the audience. This is very important, okay? This is marked for format F tadi kan? Report, ada to, ada from and ada title. Uh, this is very important, okay? On top of the uh, writing, you need to write this clearly, explicitly, okay? Make things very clear. To means the recipient from your name. Please write full name, eh? Because report is a formal. Uh, report is a formal uh, essay. Okay, please, eh, guys. 
Okay, thank you. Article, okay, you need to write title and also uh, underline the article. Okay, for report, um, you need to capitalize the first letter of each word yang you tulis masa uh, tulis report. Contoh eh, um, the flood incident for example kan, that is the report that you are writing ataupun a report on a camping trip, okay. It is advisable for you to capitalize, tulis huruf besar on the first letter of each word. Bukan huruf besar semua tau. Per, uh, huruf pertama dekat setiap perkara taal. Artikel pertama, okay. Artikel ni tricky sikit. Macam biasa juga, tolong capitalize on each word. Cuma buang preposition saja. Contoh eh, kalau perkataan of, okay, you don't have to uh, capitalize o, okay, like that. And pun tak perlu juga. Okay, and then underline, okay. Kalau artikel, you need to underline a bit the title and then tulis written by and then your full name. Tolong tulis full name eh. Bukan tulis apa? Uh, 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 tak apa, Darwish Miftah tak apa, nama penuh juga tu. Cuma jangan tulis nama samaran. Ah, uh, Nama samaran, oh, mak panggil rumah kan. Along, no, no, no. Okay, because you are writing a formal uh, essay. This is a, an academic essay, so everything should be written formally. Alright, this is an example. Okay, next slide. This is an example of People. I don't know you guys boleh zoom ke tak boleh. Please zoom eh. Uh, this is um, SPM RSM. Okay, trial SPM MRSM 2020 uh, yang I jadikan contoh untuk hari ni. When you open your question booklet, this is the first thing that you need to do. Tolong, tolonglah ingat benda ni everyone. Please remember to write down where is F1 F2, F3, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5 sampai C12. Apa tu sir? F1, F2, F1 macam nak kita tengok Formula 1 kan? F1, F2, F3 is your format marks. Okay. F1 it means the first mark for format. Second uh, part, uh, second mark for format and third mark for format and C1 means the first content point. Second content point and it goes on, the list goes on. Okay. Next slide, tekan uh, Farah. I nak you tekan je. Tekan, tekan, tekan. Okay. That is C1, that is C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8, C9, C10, C11, C12. Alright. I nak everyone Dah buka je question booklet, director writing, terus tulis ini. Buat contengan, okay, dalam your question booklet, semua orang catat di mana C1 sampai C12, F1, F2 and F3. I reminded this over and over again for my students, I will check siapa yang tak conteng question booklet dia. Alright, and it it will make you guys focus, okay? You guys will be uh, uh, more focused when you are writing. So you know um, which one that you guys are writing first. That's the first one. And tolong eh, tolong write in sequence. Dah tulis dah C1, C2, C3. Tak payah rasa macam, oh hari ni I want to be creative. I want to take C12 first and then C2 and then I will sprinkle F1 in the middle of the essay. Do not do that. Alright, please make sure you write everything in sequence to make sure that the examiner can detect ataupun locate your mark accordingly. Baru nampak cantik awak punya essay. Remember that. Okay, next slide. Okay, these are all tips and tricks to directed writing. Tolong dengar carefully for my students as well. Ada beberapa perkara baru yang mungkin korang akan belajar today. First, you need to use all the content points tak adalah anak tiri. Tak boleh tiba-tiba macam hmm, tak best lah C11 ni. But apa kata kita buang C11? Tak boleh eh. You kena guna all 12. Remember eh, when they uh, uh, clearly state when you clearly state C1 sampai C12 tu Ada beberapa C yang dia minta your own idea. Okay, so when they ask for your own idea, you need to uh, write 
of your own idea. But you need to make sure you use all the points and elaborate all the points. Okay, that is very important. The first one. Second one, organize your content points accordingly. Ideally, three to six paragraph including introduction to conclusion. Kenapa I buat three to six? Okay. Ideally, I would say five paragraphs or six paragraphs. Tapi um, ada uh, students, um, macam advanced students yang yang who are watching, yang memang um, comfortable in writing one paragraph for introduction, one paragraph for conclusion, and one paragraph for um, uh, all the content points. I kalau boleh tak nak suggest benda tu, tapi I tulis juga. It's better for you to put everything ideally in five to six paragraph, okay? Including the introductory paragraph and concluding paragraph. Make the intro and conclusion as brief as possible. Okay, tolong remember eh. Introduction, ni I nak bagi sikit tips. Kalau korang rasa you guys have um, um, limited idea, tolong baca instruction. Dekat instruction, ada brief introduction of the question. You can rewrite. You can rewrite. Okay, the instruction. But if you are uh, an above average students and advanced students, you can come up with the introduction on your own. But remember to make it as brief as possible. Remember to focus on elaborating your content points. Focus on content points. You need to develop all the points, okay? Itu kepentingan dalam writing. Introduction and conclusion tak per brief. Okay, remember. Next, avoid stringing content points. Okay, this is very important. Some disadvantages of playing, ni contoh soalan MRSM tadi ya. I ambil C1, C2. Apa, C5, C6 and C7. Some disadvantages of playing video games are it can lead to addiction, display violent behavior and affects studies. Makna kata dia letak C5, C6, C7 in one sentence. You cannot do that. Listen very carefully eh. I memang nak cakap juga benda ni. Okay, korang akan dapat markah. Memang korang akan dapat markah setiap uh, content points tu. Okay, tick, tick, tick memang dapat markah. Tapi tolong jangan buat macam ni. When you are writing direct writing, put content points, elaboration, content points, elaboration and itulah um, the sequence untuk when for you to write uh, direct writing. Elaborate right after each content point. Okay, C1, E1. C2, E2. Okay, how many sentences nak tulis sir kalau elaboration? I would say uh, some students might, uh, macam struggle untuk um, uh, to elaborate and develop the point tu and nak sampai ke point. Bila nak sampai ke point tu macam uh, tak sampai kalau satu dua ayat. So you can write three to four. Okay. Three to four sentence untuk elaborate for each point. Tapi saya kan, I would say memadailah two to three sentence. Okay. Janganlah one sentence saja. Okay. Two to three. Um, you guys um, remember eh, this is directed writing, you should be focusing on continuous writing juga lepas ni which is a, a lengthier uh, writing part of the paper. Okay, so you need to focus on both tapi dekat sana you need to put a lot more emphasis. Okay, here uh, 35 marks and 55 marks. Alright. Next part. Okay. Uh, use the correct tense. Okay, present ke, nak pakai past ke, nak pakai apa kan? Okay, the clue is in the question. Kita tengok sama-sama SPM question 2018. During the last school holiday, our school hosted a week-long visit for international students. Rewrite, uh, write a report. Okay, so for this question, you need to write it in past tense. Kenapa? Sebab dia kata your school hosted a week long visit. Okay, itu satu contoh. Cuba kita tengok soalan SVP 2020 pula. You attended a webinar on seminar stress management. Tengok uh, attended. Oh, past tense, past tense, past tense. Sebab so asli aja bila dah past dia terus past tense semua. You need to read the instruction carefully first. Macam sampai habis. Dia kata write a letter to your cousin to share information on the signs of stress and suggestions to overcome it. 
Okay, for this question, you need to write it in present tense. Kenapa present tense? Se walaupun seminar tu happen in the past, but the need of the question, the requirement of the question is about writing a letter and uh, it revolves around sharing information. Bila cari information, the general idea. Bila general idea kena present, then. Understand? Yeah. Clear? Alright. Okay, thank you so much. So, no, kalau ada student juga kat depan kan, tak adalah aku macam cakap sorang-sorang kat sini. Sedih, kan? Next part. Okay, see. Uh, next slide. Farah, thank you. See what you need to insert to make the content point a complete sentence. This is very important. Okay, a complete sentence needs a subject and a verb. If not given, a given at your own. Okay, I bagi example eh. Untuk S, uh, SPM RSM, uh, trial SP, SPM MRSM students, uh, ada this one content points nak uh, dia punya perkataan is addicted. Okay, I tak tulis kat sini kejap. I ada the note. Okay, kejap eh. Give me a brief moment tau. Okay. Okay, bila content points dia addiction, awak tak boleh um, semata-mata ambil and letak dalam sentence, tak cukup, habis kerja aku. Macam um, ada contoh, tak nak bagitahulah siapa kan, students will addiction. Kau tak, saya pun tanda. Lepas tu dia pun cakap, sir sebab dekat content points will addiction, I kena ikut content point. Okay, you need to be able to mold the word to make sure it um, suits the context of the sentence. Kalau awak guna will, model verb, awak tukar, boleh tukar eh, content point walaupun perkataan dia addiction, you boleh guna perkataan addicted. And, tapi masa elaborate, elaborate nanti, try juga. Gunalah juga perkataan addiction to be safe. Faham ke? Faham? Ha, ini penting sangat, okay? Students will addiction salah. Students will be addicted. Ha, keluar suara. Suara udang. Students will be addicted to uh, playing video games, for example. Alright? Uh, itu contoh, okay? Walaupun the content points addiction, you need to make sure it suits the context of your own writing, okay? That's the first part. Be alert with additional requirements of the question. Ini important. Okay, mesti ada part yang you kena give your own suggestion. Okay, contoh soalan SPM trial tu juga eh. Um, uh, C1 dia ialah, um, contoh eh, uh, tips on playing ga gaming habits. Tips untuk uh, bermain game secara sihat. Pertama, dia dah bagi ya, eh, dia dah bagi limit playing time. Second, appropriate games. Maknanya pilih game yang bagus lah. Third, play with friends and family. And then dia kata the fourth part tu, you need to come up with your own point. Okay, bila you need to come up with your own point, katalah awak tulis point awak, listen everyone, boleh tak semua orang pandang I? Yang depan I ni semua pusing pandang I. I tak nak, tak ada seorang pun pandang I. Semua nak pandang I. I tahu I suruh buat SVP tadi kan tapi I nak teaching kan. I nak semua pandang uh, slide. This is very important. Contoh eh kalau um, um, you need to come up with your own suggestion. Suggestion yang diberi yang pertama tadi limit playing time. Awak tak boleh uh, macam tiba-tiba dekat suggestion tu you tulis macam you need to be able to uh, study uh, and um, or, or, uh, ataupun make a timetable ataupun put a schedule. This seolah-olah you are repeating the points given by them. Remember, bila awak kena bagi suggestion, do you remember, your point tu kena betul-betul distinctive from the points given by them. Understand what I'm saying? Dia betul-betul berlainan. Okay? Kalau dia dah bagi dah limit playing time, appropriate games, play with uh, friends and family, you can come up with another uh, good point. For example, apa contoh? Um... You you can say you, you learn um, um, vocabularies, okay? You can extend your vocabularies by playing 
uh, video games. So, maknanya during elaboration, you can say that you take some notes on uh, interesting words that you encounter when you are playing. Okay, so but I, I got a lot of students in front of me and my previous students as well who uh, have extensive vocabularies and I when I ask them macam mana diorang punya vocabulary sangat banyak, banyak perkataan-perkataan bagus, dia kata, so saya main game. Saya, daripada game saya belajar yang uh, pedang bukan sword je dalam bahasa Inggeris. Ada a lot of other uh, synonyms for pedang. Tu contoh a very a very good example uh, of uh, how playing games can benefit you, okay? Lepas habis dia seminar I semua pergi main game kan? Seronok. And then, okay macam saya cakap tadi, always follow the sequence. I cannot stress this enough. Tolong ikut sequence. C1 yang atas sekali C1. Okay, macam mana kalau dia punya organisation of question tu satu, dua, tiga, empat macam ni. Yang mana satu, nombor dua. Keluar cari saya. Sir, nak tanya sikit ni sir, keluar kan? Masa jawab SPM. Jangan macam tu. You ikut your instinct. Biasanya, kalau kita membaca kan, dia satu ke atas, dua sini, tiga sini, empat sini. Betul? Dia akan, dia akan kalau macam macam ni, macam ni. Dia bukan macam ni. Understand? Dia begini. So, awak kena satu, dua, tiga, empat. Ni apa dua, tiga, empat tu, sir? Um, diagram. Biasanya dia akan bagi dalam bentuk diagram. Two, 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 three ke? Ah, like that. Uh, content points. Awak kena organize accordingly. Penat. Okay, last one. Organize your points well. Use linkers, okay? Ataupun dipanggil kongsi devices kan? Apa? Apa sama je guna. Furthermore, guna more over, guna next, guna in addition. Tolong guna. Okay? Sebab ramai tak pakai. Okay? Rasa macam, hmm, biasa sangatlah perkataan ni. Nak pakai in the retrospect kan tiba-tiba kan? Try to use, kalau perkataan-perkataan linkers macam ni, tak apa pakai. And it's very good to use. Okay? Tolong pakai. Tolong pakai dalam writing. Because you are organizing points. Wajib pakai. Okay, memang ada part untuk linking words. Okay. Last one, avoid spending too much time for this section. Be concise. Sebab tu awal-awal tadi I dah buat schedule. Okay. Jangan uh, ambil terlalu banyak masa untuk direct writing. I know you want to gain as many marks as possible. Direct writing ni, I boleh cakap masa untuk you guys dapat Mark. Kenapa saya cakap macam tu? Listen very carefully eh. Katalah awak dah dapat F3 cukup. Awak tahu kat mana F awak. Awak tahu kat mana semua 12 uh, content points kan. So dah 12 tambah 3 dah berapa dah? Awak dah dapat 15 mark. 15 mark berapa maka all together 35. Kalau awak mampu elaborate all the points uh, well enough. Ada grammatical errors here and there. Uh, I rasa eh, I dah tanya a few of uh, SPM examiners. Uh, the list that you can get is 7, 8 or 9 or 10. To the list, okay? Maknanya awak akan dapat 7 and beyond. Awak akan dapat banyak. Kalau awak tak elaborate je, awak akan dapat 7 and below. Understand? Uh, itu penting um, you elaborate. Develop the points, okay? Bila awak dapat contoh kata 10, 10 marks for language. Dah 25 marks dalam tangan. Okay, over 35. Alhamdulillah dah. But try to make sure you uh, minimize the uh, errors as much as possible. Nanti I akan bagi you contoh-contoh uh, macam mana nak start uh, essay, macam mana nak end the essay. So that, um, sebab both direct writing and continuous writing ni, uh, kalau language mark dia impression based. Okay, nanti I akan cakap apa tu impression based. Okay, eh? okay let's have a look at, I nak cakap a few format je I akan sentuh. Uh, next. Farah? Dah lima empat. Sekarang pukul lapan lima empat. My God. Okay, I'll try to make sure uh, I'll be speaking uh, quickly eh. Fastly. Quickly eh. Fastly tak ada dalam kamus eh. Fastly, fastly. Speech. Okay, first one. Salutation to speech. This is very important and this one is very interesting. Avoid writing, okay, principle. I cakap kata avoid writing principle. Tapi kalau principle yang uh, invite you guys Uh, bagi speech tu tak kena tak lah principal. Tapi avoid to list vice principal, avoid to list counselor. Tak payah. Okay. Sebab I tahu kau orang akan salah hidup. Confirm salah hidup. Counselor. L tu L, L, 4, 5, 6, 7 L. Okay. So, AC so, tu penuh dengan L je. Because you don't know how to spell counselor. So, avoid writing counselors. Uh, good morning, I bid to the principal, PAL, teachers and students. That's it. Enough. 
Tak ada pun kalau awak tulis nama panjang Oh markah tinggi ni Kena letak nama examiner Examiner pun tak tahu siapa Letaklah nama cikgu aku kan Tak ada markah extra Tadi aku cakap aku nak lanjutkan okay, I'll, be, I'll be quick okay? Grip properly okay? Le- Remember eh When you are uh, giving a speech You are giving a speech In the capacity of a student Awak bercakap Daripada sudut pandang seorang pelajar So awak grip Uh, good morning dengan good afternoon sahaja Biasanya sebagai seorang pelajar jarang awak bagi ucapan malam Good evening So good morning, good afternoon is enough Good afternoon, two bit Dr. Ganu Nampak tak two bit? Kalau two bit, tak boleh berhenti Tak boleh two bit, tak boleh berhenti tak Jang, okay, try to avoid using Assalamualaikum Kenapa sir tak boleh Assalamualaikum? Kapir, lak ratu lah So liberal, bukan Bukan macam tu To be safe, because we don't know the examiner is Muslim or not And bukannya kalau macam dia bukan Muslim uh, Amar, you can go to toilet Boleh, buat pergi pergi Tadi je I nak suruh you stay Okay, uh, avoid using Assalamualaikum Guna good, uh, good morning or good afternoon, okay Tak payah pakai Assalamualaikum And then you need to end your speech appropriately Bila cakap end your speech appropriately um, That's all from me, thank you That's all from me, thank you Cukup F3. Biasanya F3 adalah your and uh, the end of your uh, apa to end your speech. Next. Uh, next slide. Farah. Artikel. Okay, untuk artikel ada do and don't saya nak uh, uh, quickly. Macam so I cakap lah tadi awal-awal. Uh, start your article by supplying a title and then write um, the topic of your article. Uh, topic ni different dengan title. Awak macam maksud, maksud kata, when you are writing a title kat atas Dalam introductory paragraph tu, awak letak purpose awak untuk writing Purpose tu biasanya dah ada dalam instruction ha, Salih sali balik pun tak apa, kalau awak pandai paraphrase sikit Tapi I sembang dengan cikgu English kat sini, kalau tak nak paraphrase pun tak apa It's okay, okay Sebab I tahu eh, ada a lot of students here Ada different needs, ada yang below average student Ada yang uh, are struggling, it's okay, okay Tak apa Okay, sebab kita nak try untuk maximize your mark as much as possible Okay, I tak nak go through artikel ni banyak sangat Later, you guys boleh screenshot benda ni ya uh, Tak apa, sebab I, I akan ulang the I akan ulang the point sama je Next slide, uh, ni pun I tak nak sentuh banyak pun I nak sentuh sikit je This is the um, marking rubric for language mark, okay um, 20 marks is the highest mark I jarang, I tak pernah semua hidup I Directed writing I bagi 20 Never in my life Tak pernah jumpa AC yang flawless Kalau AC yang tak ada writing eh, Writing dia betul-betul tak ada error Mungkin vocab dia yang dipakai kurang merit so, Kurang merit pun tak dapat 20 juga Understand? So uh, macam mana nak dapat 19, 20? 18, 19, 20 Okay, saya cakap A kan um, Minimize the error as much as possible Kalau ada errors pun minor errors uh, Slip saja. Uh, and ada merit. Merit ni apa sir? Merit ni awak guna perkataan segar. Okay, bombastic word you said kan? Uncommon words ataupun phrases, idioms. Okay, macam one of my students hari tu uh, guna perkataan ni. Uh, when they are, uh, when he was writing about uh, responsibility of a family, dia cakap uh, a lot of parents turn their heads away from the responsibility. Faham tak? Turn their heads away. Macam, tentu oh sakit ni sakit dekat. Nah, return head so itu maksudnya dia apa? Dia mengabaikan, dia mengabaikan uh, masuk suara awak sampai ke maman. Suara tak masuk suara sampai ke maman ya. Okey, maknanya dia mengabaikan tanggungjawab. So those are uh, useful phrases, uh, very uncommon and uh, very good in your writing. Boleh pakai. Itu dapat A. Anak cakap pasal D sikit. Uh, kalau awak dapat macam tadi kan, saya cakap 10 to 12 tu, awak kalau ada patches of clarity. Kalau nampak kan, second bullet tu. Patches of clarity. Patches of clarity ni maksudnya, uh, kalau ada satu sentence, awak okey, tiba-tiba sentence lain ada um, uh, red mark. Itu nak punya patches of clarity. Kejap okey, kejap tak okey. Uh, patches. Uh, like that. So, awak akan dapat awak dalam uh, rubrik 10 to 12. Alright. Okay, now uh, I will proceed with continuous writing. Next slide. Okay, continuous writing. This is an example of question. Again, I ambil daripada trial SPM, uh, MRSM 2020. Okay, this is an example. 
Okay, kalau tengok first part of the uh, first question tu, guys, minimize your voice a bit. Thank you. The first part is uh, describe the first time you face a major failure. Itu adalah descriptive. Tapi can work as narrative. So, apa beza descriptive dengan narrative? Descriptive dengan narrative persamaan dia ialah both guna descriptive sentences. Awak berbunga-bunga dalam berbahasa. Try to be as descriptive as possible. Tapi naratif ada plot yang sedikit nak belajar. Apa start? Ingat tak? Apa first? Exposition atau introduction and then ada rising action and then ada climax and then ada falling action and then ada conclusion. Very good. Okay. Itu naratif. Okay. Kalau descriptive dia tak ada itu. Tapi untuk soalan ni menarik. Describe the first time you faced a major failure. Dia macam description tapi boleh berbentuk seperti naratif. So awak boleh describe je major failure tu tanpa buat cerita atau awak boleh buat cerita. Bila buat cakap tu buat cerita, maksudnya naratif. Bila cakap naratif, maksudnya kena ada plot. Uh, kena ada start cerita, start rising action, climax. Itu penting untuk when you are drafting your AC, alright? Second question, family members are not spending enough time together, discuss the reasons. Yang ni adalah discussion AC, kan? Third question, narrative. Fourth question, uh, factual AC, kan? Ada orang cakap expository lah, uh, factual AC. Last one, Um, is descriptive walaupun uh, dia guna perkataan describe kan you recently went to a food festival describe okay macam mana nak buat descriptive essay tak apa nanti I akan show you I, sekarang nak cakap tentang factual essay dulu ni tolong salin my student everyone tolong salin next slide sorry I minum uh, one of uh, your Uh, weakness yang uh, weaknesses yang I uh, encounter when I mark the paper ni I being gen I'm being general eh. You guys ada problem nak initiate your writing. Awak ada problem nak start off your writing sebab awak fikir macam bahasa Melayu. Sudah warsa ini comma. Dalam era marca pada ini betul. Dalam era modernisasi ini. So you will always begin your essay, e essay by in this modernization, no, in this modernization world. For example, in this modernization era, for example, kan. I would suggest you avoid using that, okay. Tapi kalau yang saya nak buatkan juga, pakai silakan. Tapi I nak introduce a few example yang awak boleh pakai. Kalau awak andai pakai, awak boleh pakai dekat mana-mana konteks pun. Macam-macam bentuk soalan pun awak boleh pakai. Eh. Contoh eh, it is truly undeniable that in this science and technology millennium, we are often apa-apa-apa. Contoh kalau soalan family tadi, awak boleh cakap, we are often neglected the responsibility of being a parent, for example. Understand? Ah, ha. Walaupun awak nak cakap tentang COVID, we are often... Um, Uh, being distracted by the fact that uh, there is a threat coming to the world. Uh, for example, uh, the corona pandemic uh, that has conquered um, the nation, the planet Earth. Antarctica tak kena corona eh? Tak tahu, okay? Never mind. It has long been a bone of contention. I nak sangat introduce this word to you guys. The main reason kenapa I panggil macam juga kat sini and with you guys as well, I nak introduce ni, the bone of contention ataupun dissension. Apa maksud dia, sir? Awak selalu nak cakap, uh, dah menjadi perdebatan. Oh, contoh, nak cakap uh, soalan dia tentang should the students bring smartphones to school? Okay, your favorite subject. Awak boleh start off your essay by writing It has long been a bone of contention that bringing smartphones to school can bring more harm than good. Bone of contention ni maksudnya menjadi perdebatan. Ha. Contoh, awak, tapi awak kena bagi satu statement yang bias. Ha. Contoh, money can bring happiness. Dia dah menjadi satu pertikaian yang duit itu memberi kebahagiaan. Betul ke money can bring happiness guys? Kalau siapa-siapa yang cakap money cannot bring happiness, please give your money to me. Okay, so that I will be happy. And 
kan kan money tak bagi happiness tak payahlah mandi kan contoh okey it is uh, I'm, I'm tak nak go through semua tapi uh, uh, you can screenshot this uh, tengok buka i sekali and then uh, try to make full use of the lines yang i bagi ni okey useful tak okey okey very good tak apa kalau rasa tak sempat nak salin tak apa nanti i um Memang rajin lah aku kan nak Raizo pula satu hal untuk korang Tak apa nanti I akan bagi lagi sekali eh Tapi dah, dah set salin dah Tak apa later eh Okay next slide Okay ni kalau advantage is advantage Ni paling menarik eh Paling menarik I nak share dengan Rizal Mahmat my student eh Boleh lah I share Oh memalukan student <laughs> Tak tak I suka macam You guys I faham tau so, You guys think in Malay Sebab tu korang tulis macam ni uh, bila ada kebaikan, pasti ada keburukan. Betul dalam bahasa, bahasa Melayu. Bahasa Inggeris, you guys tulis macam ni. When there is advantage, there is disadvantage. <laughs> so it's very weird. Kalau native speakers of English baca, dia akan nampak yang macam, apa tu? Like that. Macam, what is this? <laughs> Tapi, so I nak introduce you, kalau macam, apa, you guys nak tulis advantage dengan disadvantage, ini cara yang menarik untuk you guys pakai. Macam contoh eh, the, listen lah everyone Kalau awal-awal tu korang nak disadvantage dah And then korang baru nak introduce the disadvantage You guys can use this sentence Despite this, there are significant disadvantages It can bring to people's lives Ah, uh, Like that Macam awak nak introduce, okay ada juga disadvantage Ramai tanya saya, Sir kenapa I say uh, advantage dengan disadvantage Kenapa kita kena tulis juga disadvantage? Contoh eh, AC, smartphones bring harm, more harm than good. For example, uh, what do you think? Awak kena tulis advantage je ke disadvantage je? Both. Okay, very good. Tapi awak kena banyakkan point yang awak uh, awak uh, fikir. Macam contoh, apa bias awak? Contoh, awak rasa awak nak tulis content, uh, betul bring more harm. So, awak kena tulis lagi banyak point yang bring more harm. Tapi awak kena tulis juga the disadvantage because you want to introduce, you want to show the examiner that you are able to think on both sides. You are a critical thinker. Understand? That is why you to address both. You need to be able to put your points yang advantage, advantage, advantage and then put disadvantage. Okay? Another word for it, I would therefore argue that although there are disadvantages of the current trend of to live and work abroad. Ini uh, contoh, I say, they are outweighed by advantages. Ni awak letak dalam conclusion. Okay, conclusion awak nak awak cakap tadi kan awak letak advantage. Lepas tu awak letak juga disadvantage. Lepas tu awak nak kembali balik dekat uh, conclusion tu awak nak bagi tahu stand awak balik, awak bagi tahu macam ni. I would therefore argue that although there are disadvantages, they are outweighed. They tu ber, uh, apa, refers to disadvantages tu. Outweighed ni maksud dia? Apa dia? Okay. Uh, this outweighed ni maksud dia uh, lebih berat kepada. Okay, outweighed. Itu maksud dia. Alright. Okay, next slide. I'll stop at 9.30 eh, uh, all day. Okay, um, this is some tips and tricks for you to answer continuous writing question. Read or choose the best out of five. Itu paling penting. I know you have preference. Awak ada minat narrative. Awak dah fikir awal-awal, Nawai tu sama Rodin. Awak masuk dalam day one, awak akan tulis narrative. Awak akan tulis factual. Tapi still baca lima-lima. Jangan fokus kepada yang awak punya preference sahaja. And then try your best to choose your preference only, okay? That's the first one. Second one, write accurately, okay? Examiners will find your language errors, okay? They are grammar police, okay? Try to minimize the uh, uh, language, eh? Sebab ini express, uh, apa? Um, what was the word? Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, 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 akbar. Oh, what was the word? Impression based, subhanallah, I'm so sorry. Kadang-kadang dia got distracted kan. <laughs> impression based. Maksud impression based, kami baca, kami go through your essay and then kami akan nilaikan essay awak secara menyeluruh. Itu so, maksud impression based. Seolah-olah so, awak uh, tengok contoh awak, uh, tengok kawan awak dari atas sampai bawah. Lepas awak bagi penilaian pada dia daripada atas sampai bawah. Itu maksud impression based, okay? Guys, 
Okay. Okay. Uh, know your ability. Awak patut tangkap mana 40. Awak 40 tu apa? 40 tu adalah kekuatan awak. Okay. Uh, untuk average and weak students, use simple sentences. Write two pages maximum. Okay. Uh, two pages enough. Satu page. Dua page. Ah, like that. Alright. Um, untuk continuous writing. Tapi kalau boleh, kalau mampu, okay, one, two, and a half. If possible, one, two, a half. Understand? Alright. Kalau advanced students, you need, okay, listen eh. Advanced students, kalau awak nak dapat um, markah, uh, you want to maximize the, your mark. You want to gain as many marks as possible for, for continuous writing. Awak kena able to use mixture of sentences style. A sentence style. style apa? Uh, compound, complex and simple sentences. And kalau awak lagi bagus, awak boleh guna compound, complex sentence. Jadi empat sentence style. Simple, compound, complex, compound, complex. Ah, like that. Alright. And use very and sophisticated words, okay? Um, when you are writing, make sure that you, your thought process too is um, sophisticated enough. Baru level form 5, okay? Untuk advanced students. I know, you know the drill already. Uh, next slide. Okay. Uh, example, eh? Avoid repetition ataupun using boring words, okay? Uh, I got this uh, tips from uh, uh, my fe uh, a fellow colleague of mine, Cikgu MRSM, uh, one of the MRSMs. Uh, I don't sebut nama dia, Miss Wan Nur Miza. Thank you so much for this uh, tips. Dia kata, avoid using uh, boring words. Dia kata, uh, contoh, lovely mother, loving father, a stone's throw. Okay. The, uh, itu semua sebenarnya adalah common phrase dah. Try uh, to use a more sophisticated words. Kan? Contoh, eh, kalau nak explain, Express someone is beautiful, kan? Instead of just merely saying she is beautiful, you can say she is a woman with exquisite beauty. Bukan with that, of exquisite beauty. Her hair was sunrise gold, etc. Paint with words, eh, everyone. Paint with words. It was a nice day. Because the sun poured through my window. Another day has dawned. Had dawned. Bringing with it new hopes and aspirations. Okay, for example, kan? Make sure that your story is engaging enough. Ada one of my students uh, here, not from this class, uh, dia punya essay tu, dia buat narrative. The first uh, introductory paragraph, um, dia buat macam intro kaya narrative dia, uh, cerita, start pada cerita dia, dia macam bagi uh, description pasal karakter, bla bla bla. And then, tengah-tengah uh, essay -tengah, um, tu adalah a letter kandungan satu surat. And then dekat conclusion tu uh, adalah um, um, apa um, a concluding part of the narrative. Itu sahaja. Tapi uh, the letter is the letter tu engaging enough. Sampai the conclusion tu, sampai dia kata, dia kata apa uh, ada mystery code dalam letter tu. Rupanya dia bila dia tulis semua uh, huruf pertama dekat perenggan kedua, dia buat letter tu dalam perenggan kedua, huruf pertama in every sentence tu adalah uh, when um, apa when uh, being apa put together adalah nama seorang perempuan. So dia ada bagi secret code kepada examiner untuk faham. Mind blown, okay? One of your uh, one of your friends ada sebut nama nanti kita tahu apa. Very interesting, okay? Tapi ada banyak juga uh, uh, grammar errors. Tapi it's okay, a good attempt. So try to be as engaging, as creative as possible, alright? Okay, next slide. Descriptive AC. I tak nak cakap sangat pasal benda ni. Uh, next slide lagi sekali. Ni do's and don'ts macam biasa saja. Yang paling penting bila awak tulis descriptive AC, awak jangan tell things. Awak show things. Apa beza tell dengan show, sir? Macam contoh tell kan, saya cakap uh, rumah saya cantik. Contoh kan dalam bahasa Melayu. Tapi bila I show pada you guys rumah saya cantik ni, rumah saya tiang emas, siling berlian, hard kan. Kipas berpusing, turun bawah naik balik atas. Gitu, gitu. Kan, contoh. So, when I am describing uh, the physical characteristics of my house, you are able to imagine in your head. Faham tak? Instead of just merely saying cantik, you are not able to think, okay? You are not able to picturize whatever I have uh, spoken about. Contoh, I bagi satu contoh kat sini. Tell, 
Ah, apa tu? Pokok. The sound of crickets, owls and other creatures are quite loud at night in the jungle. Ini satu contoh awak, awak tell things, awak beritahu. Ah, be, apa crickets berbunyi, owls berbunyi, creatures berbunyi and dia sangat bising di waktu malam. Tu contoh tell. Macam mana pula kalau you show things? Okay? This is an example. The jungle at night was a cacophony of sounds. The shrill chirping of crickets. The disgruntled hooting of the owls. And the high-pitched cries of the nocturnal creatures of the jungle. Hado. Nocturnal tu apa guys? Nocturnal adalah orang ataupun living things yang tidak tidur. Lepas saya semalam, tak boleh tidur lepas tengok cerita. Hantu ya, takut. I am a nocturnal last night. Okay, you can use that word. Okay, Yunus uh, album, nocturnal. Alright, itu maksudnya uh, creatures yang tidak tidur. Uh, you guys, macam korang kalau main game, korang pun samalah seperti binatang di hutan. <coughs> Next slide, ni contoh lain, mother. Awak nak explain mother kan? This is an example from my book kan? Uh, so, when you want to tell someone about your mother, there I am looking at my mother's picture. She looks just like me. Even her smile looks similar to mine. Nampak macam dah macam boleh bayang. Tapi ada cara lain. That is another way for you to express your writing to in such a way that it will give an imagination. It will leave an impressive mark to the examiner. Contoh eh. Let's show the little woman in the picture has a face that resembles my own in many ways. Siapa sebab resembles? Persamaan, okay? Her face is a bit more oval than mine. Kalau bagi tahu, muka dia tu memang oval. Ni, I wrote this uh, in my book. I memang tulis about my mom. Okay? Her face, uh, but uh, the softly waving brown hair, her brown hair. Ni lah dah, dah uban banyak kan? Around it's identical. The small straight nose is the same model I was born with. Straight nose eh? Besar sikit hidung. Nampak tak besar hidung? Di mana hidung besar sangat? Tunjuk pulak dekat kamera subhanallah. Cikgu apa ni kan? Uh, my mother's mouth is closed yet there is just the slightest hint of a smile on her full lips. Masa tengok gambar, memanglah dalam gambar tak senyum pun senyum awak mau lari kan? Tapi nak bagi tahu in the picture ada a generous smile ke? A mother's smile. Allah buat sebab kan? Sebut pada orang nanti. Tamu dok balik PKP. Structure. Okay, next. Okay, contoh tadi. Remember. Uh, tadi punya contoh. Um, when you are this. Okay, contoh eh. Doa eh. Mana tahu keluar soalan ni dalam SPM kurang depan. Kalau soalan kata, you need to describe a person. Pernah keluar soalan uh, uh, SPM 1998. Uh, um, you need to describe a teacher. Your favorite teacher. Nampak macam senang. Tapi macam mana cara nak buat when you are describing a person. Okay. Kalau katalah minggu depan dia kata you need to describe your favorite celebrity. Okay. Contoh soalan kan. Okay. It, these are some of, and this is my idea. Okay. First paragraph awak boleh letak introductory paragraph. Introductory paragraph. Okay. Next. Tekan next. Parah. Introductory paragraph ni awak boleh uh, cakap tentang uh, awak introduce terus siapa awak cakap. Jangan berteka-teki dengan examiner eh. Oh, she has long hair. Lepas tu dekat conclusion, ah uh, try to guess kan sampai ya yeah, Pak Jamil meninggal dunia. Ya yeah, masih tidak tahu siapa. Okay, tolong address clearly in the introductory paragraph who are you talking about. Alright, second you need to talk about the physical description first. Second paragraph. You need to talk about her uh, mischievous smile. Ataupun her husky voice, for example, when you're talking about Ziana Zain, for example, kan? Oh, the husky voice. Favorite teacher, Mr. Asri. Handsome girl. Unbeatable. Panjang cerita. Kata nak duduk cepat, kan? 8, 19. Eh, 19, 19 dah. Okay, characters. And then ada hobbies. Descriptions. Concluding paragraph. Awak masa dekat hobbies tu, kalau awak rasa tak, awak tak tahu hobby, you mana lah tahu hobby Zainal Zain tu apa. Awak boleh tukar jadi achievement. Maybe you need, you, 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 apa, you boleh enlist ataupun list down her achievement so far in life, for example. Ah uh, Ni, next slide, you, uh, apa, 
when you are writing about an event contoh tadi apa eh tersiap salib nah okay um uh, next slide farah uh, when you are uh, writing about uh, an event contoh tadi dalam soalan SPM RSM you guys you need to talk about Food festival, very good. So, awak boleh cakap tentang introductory paragraph tu, awak boleh cakap tentang introduct, uh, apa? intro, kat mana food festival tu, where is it situated. And then, awak boleh cakap tentang what happened before the event, awak prepare yourself, apa? Uh, gather all your friends, assemble a lot of your friends, etc. And then, you can talk about the eve of the event, ataupun as you approach the food uh, festival, then you can talk about the many things that happen during the event after the event and also concluding paragraph. Contoh, kalau contoh you are writing about a ni SPM 2007. Eh, tak. Ada lupa. Tapi describe describe a um, celebration that happened in your country. So, awak boleh cakap tentang hari raya, cakap tentang before the event, malam sebelum event, on the day of the event, after the event and then it conclude. Okay. Next. Okay, these are some of the vocabs that you can use. Okay, uh, use idioms, figurative language. Contoh, you must drop the don't care attitude. Okay, uh, figurative ni macam awak pakai lah uh, literary uh, elements uh, sikit-sikit. Contoh, um, apa, ada metaphor, simile kan. Uh, macam, the use of simile as white as no, kan. Like a candle, macam Mr. Asri is like a candle. Uh, kan, burning his, himself to teach other students sampai eh, rentung, eh, tak berapa nampak. Uh, kuat sikit. Kuat sikit lah Syafiq tak dengar kat kemaman ni. Syafiq ke cakap tadi? Uh, Syafiq, yes, betul. Okay, these are synonym. Instead of using the word vital, uh, important, you can use the word vital. Essential, significant, crucial, salient is another word for important. Okay? Those kind of things. Okay, so I nak buat quiz vocabulary dengan everyone yang tengah tengok ni. Tak tahu berapa orang tengok. I tak tahu pun berapa orang tengok ni. But thank you so much for your cooperation so far. Tapi I nak buat something interactive with everyone. Jom kita main game. Next. Tak dengar kan? Sedih betul lah macam ni. Ten, 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 ten. Ah, kita muzik dia. Eh? Nampak buka air je. Hello? Farah? Tak apa, tak apa. Tak ada bunyi pun tak apa. It's okay, Farah. Eh? It's okay. Ah, uh, letak dia slide. Hello? Farah? Tak apa, tak apa. Tak ada bunyi pun tak apa. It's okay, Farah. Alright. Kita main game sikit eh, everyone. Uh, kita try jawab soalan ni satu. Ah, ada bunyi muzik. Okay, next slide. Oh, quite young. Jack and Jane are twins, but they do not look alike. A similar, B exact, C identical, D likely. What is the answer, everyone? What is the answer, guys? Macam for your information, I am a, uh, I have a twin as well. Ada seorang lagi, uh, uh, Mr. Asri dekat Dungun Terengganu right now. Um, so kalau kami tak sama, uh, 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 persamaan kalau twin, what is the most accurate word to replace the word alike? So the answer is, yes, identical. Very good. Next. Okay, boleh kita... Uh, Okay, so kita nak ke sepuluh sen. Okay, okay, next slide. Not many know that they are twins, that they are twin as they are as different as night and day. Ni apa nak menganjing ke night and day juga seorang seorang. A, somewhat different. B, have no similarity. C, in stark contrast. D complementary. What is the answer? Okay, okay. My students here answer C. Semua jawab C. Okay, the answer is C. Very good. Awesome, you guys. Quite gila, Mr. Ramai. Next slide. 
All right. Next question. Not many know that they are twins that as they are as different as night and day, even in terms of their characters. In terms of can be replaced by which word? A, according to. B, with regards to. C, in the conditions of. D, with the exception of. What is the answer? A, B, C, D. Okay, the answer is, okay, you can, you can uh, use the lifeline. Next slide. Uh, ada uh, pertolongan, uh, pertolongan, pertolongan nyawa. 50-50. Okay. So, the answer is, next slide. B, with regards to, good job, Iza. Alright lah. Okay, dah main. Okay, dah main eh. Okay, now I want to touch a little bit about your common mistakes in writing. Um, biasanya, uh, what drag your mark down for continuous writing is your limited vocabulary. When you use the same words over and over again, um, so you need to extend uh, your vocab as well. In one week, sir, apa boleh buat, sir? Uh, kalau boleh, boleh baca banyak material, baca lah. Okay, read, read. Difficulty with sentence structure and word order. Kadang-kadang your subject verb agreement pun ada mistakes lagi. He says, everyone says, she says, I say. Those kind of things. Okay, you need to be able to know the basic. Okay, next uh, spelling errors yang ni, I tak tolerate spelling errors. You can ask my students spelling error. Dia orang kena repeat berapa kali you guys? Satu perkataan. 1,000 times. Kalau ada spelling error, contoh dia orang aja friend, F-R-E-I-N-D, ah, seribu kali lah dia orang, salin balik. Bayangkan kalau uh, lapan kata Farah, Amirah, you remember? Kan? <laughs> Tenses, uh, of course, you need to be able to be consistent with your tense uh, bila you are writing a narrative, pasal yang kita pakai. And last one, unable to fulfill the requirement of the question. Saya nak cakap sikit je pasal ni. Tolong eh, guys, listen eh. Ada 2017 punya question yang infamous. Infamous maksudnya, dia famous for the wrong reason. Um, bila dia kata, you need to uh, suggest a local destination uh, for a trip kan. Ramai dari Paris, uh, Mekah, Zimbabwe. Uh, uh, salah eh, because you are not fulfilling the requirement of the question. Farah Amira, I, I think, uh, Umaira, I think you guys remember this as well. Kan, tolong read carefully. Kalau dia kata, an unfortunate incident happened to a friend. Tolong tulis a friend. Jangan, oh, a lot of my friends are in that incident. Flooding to the, for them. Jangan tulis macam tu. Okay, ikutlah requirement of the question, okay? Baca elok-elok. Kalau kata a friend, a friend lah. Sama macam novel response. Kalau nak a scene, a scene. Satu. Okay, tolong ingat. Okay, baca elok-elok instruction. Alright, sebelum kita pergi Q&A session. Dah pukul berapa dah? 9.28. Korang stay eh, kejap eh. Nanti I nak buka soalan eh, Q&A session. I nak share dengan you guys um, tiga tip. Sebab kita memanglah belajar-belajar-belajar uh, kan. Um, tapi at the end of the day, uh, jawab boleh jawab, eh tak eh, semua kepada Allah. Dan Allah nak bagi tu, eh, apa, influence by a lot of factors. So hari ni I nak share dengan you guys, uh, pesan Luqman Al-Hakim pada anak dia. Uh, surah Luqman uh, uh, Al-Hakim ni betapa hebatnya dia sampai Allah dedicate a surah, a verse. Under his name, okay. Siapa Luqman Al-Hakim ni? Luqman Al-Hakim ni adalah seorang um, uh, tukang kayu. Tak miskin, betul. Tukang kayu yang sangat miskin. Tapi Allah uh, angkat darjat dia uh, sebab dia ada tiga sebab. Dia antara orang yang masuk syurga kan. And then uh, ada ada sahabat Rasulullah tak miskin tanya dia apa amalan uh, amalan dia yang Menyebabkan dia masuk syurga. Tiga amalan dia nak share dengan korang eh. Very interesting. 
ni bukan pasal pesanan lagi anak nak beritahu pesanan dia pada anak dia tapi ni sebab dia masuk syurga dia kata satu sebab dia jujur kedua sebab dia amanah klise jujur klise amanah klise kan ketiga kerana dia tidak mengambil tahu apa yang bukan halnya ha, itu sebab dia masuk syurga ya siapa yang suka tawang tu fahamlah kan ya pandang diri sendiri ya pandang diri sendiri okey saya nak share pesanan pertama Luqman Al Hakim pada anak ni Wahai anakku, bukanlah satu kebaikan namanya bila mana engkau selalu mencari ilmu tetapi engkau tidak pernah mengamalkannya. Hal itu tidak ubah seperti orang yang mencuri kayu api maka setelah banyak ia tidak mampu memikulnya padahal ia masih mampu menambahkannya. Okey, ni saya cakap tentang kepentingan ilmu eh. Uh, if I were to share my story sikit je, masa I sekolah rendah, I 5A as uh, UPSR. 5A, okey. Pandang sikit. 5A sekolah sekolah rendah batu 48 dungun Terengganu eh. 5A 30 orang eh. Cerdik tak? Dah lah handsome cerdik pula tu. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Masuk sekolah menengah, I masuk sekolah harian biasa. So I dapat tawaran SDP, MRSM dapat ni. I rasa tak dapat. SDP dapat tapi I tolak sebab I tak boleh jauh dengan um, my mum kan. I uh, masa tu uh, uh, homesick sikit tak boleh duduk asrama. I masuk sekolah biasa. Sekolah biasa I masuk kelas khas. Uh, Cuba ulang sama-sama I kelas apa? Kelas khas eh. Kelas kan pagi I datang, budak cerdik datang pagi. Budak tak pandai datang petang. Dengan cerita I dulu tau dengan cerita I. Budak tak pandai datang petang. Eh, pagi budak satu budak. Thank you. So ada dua kelas khas. I hmm. macam dalam kelas khas tu lelaki sangat sikit tau. And then uh, form 1, form 2, form 3 kan Bila I ada dalam kelas tu Belas tengah pun I tengok budak-budak yang tak pandai pun datang Betul I macam oh, Budak tak pandai, budak tak pandai datang Macam tu tau And then I macam keluar macam uh, Kalau langgar dekat tahu I macam sapu sebab kotor ya Kotor <laughs> Dengar dulu And then what happened to me Masa I PMR I dapat 1A, 6B, 1C That result is the best result I have I have ever gotten in my life. Kenapa I share benda dengan you guys? Because I was too proud of myself. Saya anggap ilmu yang saya dapat dulu masa saya sekolah rendah, saya rasa uh, saya yang terhebat dalam dunia, terpaling hebat dalam dunia dah. And I don't care about other people. Bayangkan masa I form 4, I masuk kelas that friend of mine yang apa yang I shrugged uh, the shoulders tu. And then ingat ke hari pertama I masuk, I masuk, I nak duduk, dia tarik kerusi, I, I jatuh. Dia kata, eh buat benda sini ni lah. Dia cakap, aduh kau apa hal? Buat benda sini mu. Bukan muka depan kita pun. Dia menganjing I. Those kind of things. That, that happened to me. Tapi um, I um, I gone through form 4 and form 5 with them. Uh, yang I kata berada dalam pandai, kurang pandai tu. Sedangkan I pun berada bersama mereka. Dalam form 4 sampai form 5, I bersama mereka. And Alhamdulillah, my SPM result. Biasa dia, I got flying colors result. Lots of colors in them. Ada red, yellow, blue kan. Saya tanya lah berapa but then again Alhamdulillah um, Masa saya masuk college, saya tak pandai pun English For your information, I wasn't good at it and I didn't, I didn't like the language For your information Maybe your English is better than mine when I was in your age Okay, masa saya 17 tu, you guys lagi bagus lah Tapi what uh, helped me a lot is when I was in Aizat Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Tengku Iktan Zahra Dungun I met this one teacher dia um, push me a lot cikgu lelaki masa form 5 pun I dapat cikgu lelaki juga and uh, he helped me a lot sampai I masuk college professional marik nama kota I, I um, ambil diploma in English communication uh, belajar dekat situ lah I uh, got ada enam college professional marah seluruh Malaysia and uh, macam contoh kalau awak masuk KPM tahun depan eh tahun ni tu 2020 July for example kan uh, July 2020 ke enam-enam college ni akan convo contoh 2023 for example kan. So semua akan uh, berkumpul di PICC, Putrajaya International Convention Center uh, satu batch. Dalam, dalam satu batch yang ramai enam-enam college seluruh Malaysia tu dia akan pilih seorang je overall best student and Alhamdulillah I got the overall best student masa tahun 2011. Uh, like this. this is the one of the best achievement of my life sebab I got to bring my mum atas pentas and masa I atas pentas dengan my mum dengan my sister ni Uh, kalau nampak belakang my mum tu, my sister kan uh, Nampak tak muka my mum, dia tak senyum eh, dia marah Kenapa dia marah? Sebab eh, mana MC tu sebagai grafiti I Dan ibunya adalah seorang penjual kerupuk lekor Lepas tu my mum pukul I atas pentas lah Sebab apa kau buka orang jual kerupuk lekor? Malu ma Satu. Ya atas pentas kena marah, biasa, normal <laughs> Tengok muka dia masih marah tu 
Tak, tak dia sedih dia baru pun menangis dia terlalu terharu lah. Uh, and my father passed away three months before this happened. Betul betul. No, two months before this happened. Two months. Uh, membawa ai kepada pesanan kedua Imam uh, apa? Uh, Luqman al Hakim pada anaknya. Wahai anakku, Allah Allah mewasiatkan dirimu berbuat baiklah dengan ibu dan ayahmu. Justru janganlah engkau menghadik mereka dengan perkataan maupun perbuatan dibenci seandainya ibu bapamu marah kepadamu kerana kesilapan yang kamu lakukan maka marahnya ibu bapamu adalah sebagaikan baja bagi tanam-tanaman. Saya nak bagi saya nak guess tiga je pasal ni. Ada banyak pasal yang lumayan hakim tapi pasal kedua ni revolve around parents. Blessings from your parents. This is my father. Next slide. Um, ayah saya meninggal dunia tiga, uh, dua bulan sebelum men, uh, apa saya dapat anugerah itu in my speech saya sebut uh, yang saya tahu um, ayah saya tengok saya uh, masa saya dapat anugerah tu cakap this is for you bak kan and can you imagine um, uh, throughout that year tu 2011 tu adalah uh, the most haunting years in my life lah, sebab saya baru habis diploma tapi macam seolah-olah Allah tunggu saya habis belajar masa tu Allah uh, apa ayah saya jatuh sakit Allah yarham ayah saya jatuh sakit uh, saya sempat tujuh bulan jaga dia mandikan dia every morning and then my, my mom um, ambilkan wuduk dia basuhkan berak kencing dia um, I got to do that Alhamdulillah um, and can you imagine um, masa ayah saya meninggal saya dapat tawaran ke UK dan New Zealand eh uh, Selepas habis saya belajar di KPM, saya dapat tiga tawaran universiti, satu di UKM, satu di London, satu di New Zealand. Uh, dan masa saya dapat uh, London, saya sempat bagi tahu ayah saya a day before dia meninggal, uh, saya minta restu dia. Dan masa dia meninggal, saya jadi orang terakhir di kubur, um, bacakan Yasin. Kalau you guys, don't worry if this happen to you, but if this happen to you, anak-anak, anak-anak yang lelaki, mandikan, kafankan, awak. Uh, bawa ke liang lahat, awak turun ke bawah, awak yang letak kepala ayah awak, awak naik atas, orang yang terakhir balik, awak baca Yasin, alright and then I was the only last one to be there and then masa I keluar daripada uh, tanah uh, perkarangan kubur tu I spoke, uh, uh, I baru perasan my friend was waiting for me Uh, dalam uh, kereta, uh, I masuk je kereta tu dibagi ayah ayah hundred plus. Saya nak cerita benda ni sebab kalau katalah tak benda tak jadi pada awak tapi awak pergi pengumuman kawan awak punya ayah ataupun mak datang bawa ayah hundred plus satu. Besar. Betul. Sebab I tak makan langsung that day. And macam seolah-olah kawan I tahu. So, I minum dengan lahap je ayah hundred plus tu. And then uh, um, bayangkan I balik rumah. Uh, my mom was, uh, my, uh, kalau kat Tengganu awak tahu eh, biasanya yang perempuan tak pergi. Uh, ke kubur untuk uh, proses terakhir kan and then my mom baru habis solat asar time tu and then my mom panggil I I balik, I jumpa dia, pegang dia, tangan dia and then dia kata um, I, I dapat London kan baru tinggal ma, I jangan tinggal ma dia pegang tangan I, dia kata jangan tinggal kalau if you were in my shoes would you leave your parents? would you leave your mother? awak dapat London awak, tu mak awak cakap jangan pergi, awak pergi ke tak? I caught Mara and I straight away tolak. I tolak London. I cakap tak apa cikgu, tak, eh, tak apa cik, saya ke UKM. Sebab saya dapat UKM dah. And then, um, dapat New Zealand tiba-tiba, biar sisu. I cakap, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> Kena saya mang molek dengan Ma ni. Cakap molek-molek dengan my mom and I spoke to my mom and then my mom kata boleh pergi uh, dengan tiga syarat. Syarat pertama, uh, telefon Ma every day. Yang tu wajib. Uh, jangan kawin masalah. Uh, uh, perempuan perempuan uh, luar negara balik kawin sini dia kata gitulah itu pesanan dia uh, adalah pesanan dia. I, that this is my mom macam merah macam gila from ghetto and then um, that is what i have been doing sampai i sekarang hidup umur 31 tahun dah sekarang ni i 31 dah this year uh, begitulah i tak pernah ada hari yang i tak telefon my mom tak pernah ada hari I tak dengar suara dia. And I hope that you guys akan ikut benda ni. Uh, 
berdasarkan pada mam ni very important i believe yang i bukan pelajar cemerlang i believe yang i bukan pandai pun in my real life tapi what brings me sampai uh, i ada sini hari ni speaking to you guys is the blessing from her her doa was so powerful was so magical i cannot begin to encapsulate it in words all right this is my mom all right uh, pernah sekali i call my mom my mom nangis When I was in New Zealand lah. Tak pun nangis ni. Tentu bawa, bawa, bawa balik ceramah agama. Lepas tu doktor, uh, apa, Ustaz Mah cerita pasal Uwais Al-Kani. U- Macam mana Uwais Al-Kani ni angkat fikul, uh, apa, lembu, anak lembu, calf. Kan? And then, uh, um, apa, pusing-pusing untuk praktis, untuk fikul ibunya untuk tawaf Kaabah. Betapa sayangnya dia ibu dia kepada, uh, uh, dia pada ibunya, Ayi lah Uwais Al-Karni. Memang Ma. panggil Ayi Ayi that time. Uh, that phrase tu remain macam etched in my uh, life forever lah. Itu yang kedua. Dan yang ketiga, last kali I nak sentuh. I bagi, ambil lima minit je. Last ni, wahai anak kesayanganku, Allah SWT memerhatikan dirimu dalam kepekatan malam semasa engkau bersolat atau tidur lainnya belakang tabir di dalam istana. Dirikan solat dan jangan engkau berasa ragu untuk meninggalkan perkara makruh dan melepas jauh segala kejahatan dan kebencian. Ni yang nak cakap tentang kepentingan solat. Dia cakap tentang ilmu, dia cakap tentang ibu bapa, now your relationship with Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. I nak share my experience when I was in New Zealand, I met this, I ada 14 orang. I datang, uh, pelajar Malaysia 14 orang. I ketua batch, penolong I, perempuan, uh, nama dia Asma. Asma ni uh, cantik orangnya. Dia, uh, dia, apa, dia, ni lah. Dia Asma, uh, dia, bagi, apa, um, um, di, Riset oleh seorang uh, lelaki New Zealand. Lepas tu dia datang jumpa saya, dia kata, okey ke Asri macam ni, macam ni kan. And then what happened, um, I cakap kat dia, telah lah um, sembang. And then yang lelaki tu uh, make an effort untuk uh, perpuasa, uh, belajar etc. And dia masuk Islam. Uh, dia masuk Islam uh, bukan untuk kahwin dengan Asma pun sebab dia embrace the uh, religion. Alhamdulillah, um, dia berkahwin. And, um, apa yang saya nak cerita bukan pasal uh, mereka berdua tetapi pasal Benjamin ni yang masa dia berkahwin. Um, the day after dia masuk Islam tu very interesting sebab dia call I, dia kata, okay Asri, now that I have uh, embraced Islam in my life, what should I do? Should I pray now? Dia tanya soalan I, I, I macam tu. I pun tak tahu nak jawab macam mana tapi dia kata, Asri, please teach me how to pray because pagi tadi I know subuh prayer. I have missed my subuh prayer. Dia kata macam tu. Dia kata what I did, I duduk macam ni. I uh, angkat tangan I, I cakap Allah, I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pray. He said that. Now Asli mesti datang rumah I asal tau. Dia kata Asli teach me how to pray. So kelakar I, I solat dengan dia. Uh, I jadi imam, I kat sepi tu, I nampak lah dia. Masa dia jadi rokok, masa dia pun pandang. I uh, like that. Dan macam dia sujud pun dia macam pandang. Sebab dia nak tengok the next instruction kan. Dia just nak tahu the movement space. And then right now, I heard dia jadi diri imam dah dekat anak dia dekat rumah. Eh, de, uh, de, uh, rumah. Kan mereka berdua live in New Zealand. Both my friend ni. Uh, tengok muka I handsome tu kat sebelah. Eh, translate semua benda yang uh, apa katik tu cakap pada dia. Uh, that is one of the uh, examples lah yang I boleh share dengan you guys. Kalau orang yang baru masuk Islam pun boleh embrace Islam that to that maximum level to the utmost limit apalah reason kita yang ba- yang memang born as a muslim itu je my question i would i would like to leave you guys with that question now it's 9:45 already i have 15 minutes i open for q and a session farah and umaira uh, uh, is there any question Madam, before I, sorry sir, before the Q&A session, uh, we will like uh, to call upon uh, Puan Salmawati to give uh, some opinions. Sure. Okay, Assalamualaikum and can you all hear me? <coughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, Cikgu Asri. I, I like the word Cikgu actually because it really has a, a special meaning. Okay. Thank you very much Cikgu Asri. Um, to me, your sharing is very good. 
okay uh, very useful for students and uh, as uh, you went through sharing uh, the knowledge on the writing and continuous writing i could see most of the points that you you had been sharing they are very relevant okay for the students to answer the questions okay so congratulations and thank you so much uh, uh i just want to share uh, just some information on the criteria of a good cw okay if you don't mind uh, for a cw for continuous writing uh, I, I came up with a list of criteria in order to have a good continuous writing a good essay for continuous writing okay the first one i put it as the co sentence construction okay the way students uh, construct the sentences where they put the subject where they put the word and so on the second one is the grammar errors the third one is the the variety of the sentences or the types of the sentences those three are among the weak areas for the students in Kemaman. Okay. And then uh, the fourth one is the vocabulary. Okay. And uh, after that, it comes um, uh, creativity, the creativity of the writing. And the last one is uh, how interesting uh, the, the essay is, how, how much it arouses. Okay. Uh, the the interest of the readers okay uh, so uh, those are the six criteria which i have always shared uh, with the students here and for students in kemamat as i said number one two and three are the parts where we really need to pay attention on the students okay especially for the average and the weak ones okay to mean that if they are able to write the essays okay we focus more when they write the essay we focus more on those three then we try to add with uh, some vocabulary and our strategy is also to sort of um, give them the list of vocabulary share with them list of vocabulary and where in, in which they can make use of in their essays because sometimes they within a very short time within one year Sometimes um, they they don't really read. They don't really read newspapers for the students here, but it is different with your students at MRSM. Okay, so uh, I would say it's a great sharing, and I would say I, I I love it because I found out that most of your content are similar to what I've shared. Okay, but you have your own different ways of sharing everything here, and they are also detailed. And then um, the, the, the steps given, okay, the tips given, they are focused, okay, specific. Okay, so thank you so much, Ego Asri. I hope the students gain a lot from this session. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you so much to Puan Samawati. Now uh, we are going to open up for the Q&A questions. Um, so actually, I have received a couple of questions here, which uh, the first one is, can I apply for scholarships after I got my SPM results next year? And the second question is, for the summary part, how to ensure that I write exact 250 words because I always get I always got it extra now those are the questions that are being asked uh, personally hey. <laughs> All right. thank you so much for the question uh, the first part of the question though I think I cannot answer lah. oh my god uh, um, thank you so much for uh, asking okay the first question uh, how to get a scholarship right after your SPM I am not a person to answer that lah kot. maybe you can go and seek an advice from your counsellor uh, because he or she will be the most ap appropriate party to um, explain you guys about that uh, 
from my experience macam mana I pergi sampai ke New Zealand I would say kalau you guys berminat untuk sambung English ataupun um, accountancy ataupun um, masuk ke KPM uh, I would like to promote college professional mara sikit juga because it gives an opportunity for Bumi Putra untuk belajar dengan allowance for free allowance for free and then um, ada peluang kalau 3.9 and above you guys will have a chance untuk uh, study abroad okay if you were to to get 3.90 and above uh, CGPA okay that's the first question the second question um, macam mana nak um, make sure that you will answer everything apa uh, in summary tu in 130 words Sumaira bukan 250 250 nak tulis apa panjang sangat takut kan 130 words tu 10 first uh, first given words tu 10 words and then the, uh, another 120 words are from you guys so what I always ask my students to do is to make a table first okay what um, um, tabulate your uh, words and then letak di dalam Um, letak dalam uh, table tu your words so that awak tahu kat mana awak akan habis okay when you will end your summary second make sure you um, allocate all the points so I ada this um, formula untuk summary boleh tak I nak ajar sikit ada marker tak everyone anyone ada marker I nak bawa kamera I ke sini sikit okay okay Okay, lembu. Okay, um, boleh tarik tak? Kita. Uh, I adjust sikit eh, nampak ke? Okay, sampai ke Maman. Yay, dah sampai ke Maman. Okay, um, okay. MC plus a bit eh. Sorry guys, kalau tak nampak I tapi I buat kat belakang sikit. Kalau nampak-nampak eh, tapi if you were to answer a summary question, I ada this formula tau, okay? B, guys listen very carefully eh, Ini I'm repeating myself eh. B, R, I, E, F. Lagi penting tengok, oh, bot ni kot daripada tengok I. Kan? Tengok bot lah. Okay, B, R, I, E, F. The first thing that you need to do is you need to box, okay? Box ni kena box apa? You need to box the line, okay? Because when you are writing um, a summary, ada instruction. Guys, tolong sit down. Everyone sit down. Korang ada uh, a, um, you need to allocate the uh, points to from which line until which line. So, awak box siap-siap kat mana awak nak uh, allocate all those lines. Okay. So, awak box first. Second, awak kena read. I know you have already read the passage when you are answering the comprehension question. But you always need to reread the passage uh, one more time in order for you to get all the points, okay, you need, uh, in order for you to answer summary question. I is, apa I? Aku dah ajar. Apa I? I is identify. You need to identify the points, okay, all the points to, you need to allocate, okay, try to find and as many points as possible that and answers both question. Ingat eh, summary, dia tak tanya satu dah sekarang biasanya, dia akan tanya two questions, okay, so underline, highlight, do whatever you can to allocate and identify all the points. And E, you need to extract. You need to extract the points, okay, take out, okay, extract maksudnya ambil, letak dalam summary tu, cantik-cantik. And last one, you need to find a finalize. Okay, masa finalize ni lah, kalau awak ada ability untuk paraphrase, tak paraphrase. Tapi listen eh, very carefully um, if you think that you are not able to paraphrase your content points, do not. Okay, just simply ambil daripada, ambil daripada summary, letak sahaja terus dalam your summary. Remember yang cakap, I would encourage, I would encourage you to take um, Ambil copy sebiji-sebiji letak balik dalam summary If you think you cannot paraphrase Sebab apa? Because if you were to paraphrase wrongly You will lose your content marks Okay? Understand? Okay, and finalize juga When you put the contents all together You need to be able to put um, linkers as well Organize them uh, and letak linkers uh, Furthermore, uh, plus, next, in addition, etc Those linkers are very useful Alright? Umaira, Farah, any other question. Okay, so kalau nak buat example 
kalau isi saya kena letak contoh yang fakta ke uh, yes you can always use facts you can always use um when you elaborate kan um, you want to justify your points kan so in order for you to justify points there are a lot of ways for you to do that contoh eh when you want to talk about um, smartphones kan you may not have um, facts regarding um, whether or not bringing smartphones will bring harm or good kan tapi um, make out fakta tak apa awak boleh make out tapi biasanya kalau my students make out uh, the facts they akan feel miserably so what i can always say you can only justify your point tak letak fakta pun tak apa, okay? But if you remember facts, that's very good. It will be plus points for you, okay? So, you can just merely explain, okay? Uh, bagi tahu advantage. And then another way of doing this, bagi tahu another world, contoh, when, um, kalau contohlah awak tak ada um, um, points awak tu, what will happen, okay? What are the consequences if you don't pull the point? Itu pun one of the ways to elaborate like that. Okay, other question? Thank you, Aizam Sukaila for the question. Aimira Hanis, thank you very much, sir, for the tips. By the way, you are so funny. Handsome? Eh, yeah. nak cakap pula kan? Oh. Good luck to all SPM candidates too. Dia cakap good luck kat korang. Cakap thank you. SOP, SOP, SOP. Uh, the, mereka dah berada kat sini since January. So, uh, they are able to be together. Sebab mereka tak pergi mana-mana dah. InsyaAllah. Uh, apa? Akan duduk lah. Akan duduk. Akan duduk. Alright. Ada other questions? That's it? Ah, yeah, that's it. That's the only question. Awesome. 9.56. Good time management, guys. Good job. <laughs> yeah, uh, Miss Asri. Uh, when you said about the spelling error, I have uh, an experience where I needed to write four pages of Puskat paper. Four pages I had... of spelling error, Farah. Ha, ha, ha. Luckily, Sir Iswadi didn't ask us to do that. <laughs> Lucky <laughs> you, Myra. Uh, okay, uh, as, saying goes, uh, as, as a saying goes, to every beginning, there is an ending, and now the ceremony has come to its end. So once again, thank you everyone for gracing our ceremony with your presence. We truly appreciate it. On behalf of the organizing com committees, we would like to apologize if we have made any mistakes throughout the event. We end our duty as master of ceremony for today's event with Wabilahi Taufiq wa Hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you so much. Good luck for SPM. Woo! Okay. So thank you.